And Democrats closer than ever to turning America into a full-blown banana republic. Donald Trump has just three days to post a half a billion dollar bond in the civil fraud penalty against him, or Tish will drop the A-bomb. The New York Attorney General could freeze his bank accounts and seize his property, and she's already taken the first necessary step to do so, filing judgments to get her hands on his golf course and private real estate. The media acting like total psychopaths by relishing in Trump's financial misery. Donald John Trump is broke and begging for money. Carry the three. You're just going to have to carry the... <laughs> is Letitia James going to go, like, put a, a chain on Trump Tower? And I can't wait to see the chains on Trump Tower, actually, on Fifth Avenue. I'm, like, <laughs> kind of excited about it. They can even seize his plane. I vote for that. I can think of nothing more delightful. <laughs> He, he's going to say, you know, you're, you're cheating me. You know, you're, you're trying to destroy me by not getting the right price. Well, go find your own buyer then, Donald. Now he's <laughs> down to tent revivals in Florida. Maybe he'll be selling blessed oil before this is over. <laughs> Joe Biden also thinks it's hilarious that his lackeys are trying to bankrupt his political opponent, telling a group of donors this, quote, just the other day, a defeated-looking man came up to me and said, Mr. President, I have crushing debt and I'm completely wiped out. And I had to look at him and say, Donald, I'm sorry, I can't help you. They can laugh all they want. But millions of Americans are waking up to the Democrats' lawfare, and one pundit's warning that they may pay a price for it in November. If the New York attorney general starts to take his homes away, starts to seize his assets, it's all going to be on camera. Pundits are going to sit there and scream about this. This man cannot be elected. You're going to create the greatest victimhood of 2024, and you're going to elect Donald Trump. Greg, do you agree with Frank Luntz? I take everything back that I've ever said about your hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whether this happens or not, it, we're in a bad place. This is the Tanya Harding method of politics. Rather than compete fairly, take the opponent out. Tish is Jeff Galuli, and the telescopic baton is her office. And who's cheering this on? Not just the Democrats. You have the media, who if they did 10 minutes of soul searching, they'd find out they didn't have a soul. But they'd also realize that they are the very evil. They've turned into the very evil that they accused Trump of being. They're a drooling mob uh, with pitchforks and torches. I get the glee. I understand there's a human weakness involved in, in finding joy when somebody you don't like is being punished. But you have to understand that long term, the punishment that you're taking glee out of it is going to destroy this country. They, they're marveling at the financial penalty, penalty and why? Because it's so obviously um, uh, excessive. It's so excessive, it's hilarious. So that means that they admit that this is a violation of the Eighth Amendment. It's it's. Obviously, an excessive fine, which is prohibited by the amendment, and it's for a non-crime in which there, no one is owed any restitution. They also, they also congratulate like Liz on this unprecedented, groundbreaking uh, legal charge, which again proves that she made good on a political threat to get Trump, and then twisted a law that is not used for um, mundane transactions in real estate in order to punish him. So the people doing that admit that it's illegal, it's against the Constitution, but they don't care because Trump is Hitler and they're trying to save democracy. But if they just realized in a quiet moment that you're willing to destroy an industry, the real estate industry, you're willing to destroy the city, New York, because no one's gonna invest here, you're destroying law, liberty, private property in order to confiscate a person's livelihood because politically you despise them. If they haven't considered the consequences on that, cultural Marxists normally don't, but they are going to end up, I mean, I, I said before that this is going to red pill a lot of America. It's going to radical, radicalize a lot of people when you realize that what you think and what you vote and what you believe makes you a target. You're going to get the F out of here. And you're going to and, and you're really, really never going to look back. Well, Shannon Bream's already been radicalized. So, mm -hmm. I mean, welcome to Clearly. the party. Yes. Shannon, what are the legal options for the former president right now? Well, I got to tell you, if they take this to the Supreme Court, it gets to this issue of the Eighth Amendment, which is going to, for some people on the left, make their heads explode because it's going to be A.G. Letitia James 
versus the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg because the justice ruled in a case back in 2019 that the Eighth Amendment does apply to state action. So if you think this is an excessive fine and a lot of people, as Greg pointed out, would say, where were the damages? Where were the victims for a half a billion dollars that the former president's now supposed to show up with? I'd be very interested to see what the Supreme Court does with that. And you have to remember that this is setting a precedent. So if you don't like President Trump, if you do like President Trump, this is a court precedent now that if somebody you like, your favorite billionaire who's maybe on the left one day, this precedent's going to apply to them too. So people have to remember when you make these choices or you cheer for something, your team may be affected too. I can't wait to seize all Soros' properties, <laughs> take his bank account, Jessica. You started it. I love the concept of the ghost of Ruth Bader Ginsburg mm -hmm. in the courtroom with everything. That's an interesting parallel. Um, I've been uncomfortable with this since the beginning when the Stormy Daniels decision came down. I don't think that this or a set of decisions that resonate with the American people. They have said in survey over survey, you know, January 6th, election interference, the classified documents at Mar-a-Lago, these are things that compute for them and that these cases here in New York feel personal. Right, especially when people have campaigned on them. But Donald Trump went on Good Truth you, Social. <laughs> it's just a little fast, I'll just a few more seconds. First. <laughs> he posted on Truth Social, through hard work, talent, and luck, I currently have almost $500 million in cash. Well, your lawyer said that you didn't have that money. You had before, and we talked about this a couple days ago, he had before said, I have like 400 million. You said, well, he's, where is he supposed to get the extra 54 million? I guess he found another 100 million in the course of the last two days. And his lawyers have been in court arguing that it's an undue burden, that they can't get the bond for this, even though the state has come back and said, you can get a bunch of smaller bonds. It doesn't have to be for the 454 million. And he's just squandering Good faith, like Mark Cuban defending him, saying, you people don't understand the real estate market. He went hard after uh, Congressman Ted Lieu from California, saying real estate developers don't keep cash like this. That would be stupid. Well, Donald Trump is now telling us that he does. So if he has the cash, that doesn't mean he has to put up his properties and they lose value if he wins his appeal. I don't know if he will, but that's the argument that he's been making. So why is he saying that he has $500 million in cash, Jesse? Why is he saying you know, that? I, think, I don't know. I'm not Donald Trump. I think when Americans look at this <laughs> issue, they're not thinking about that aspect of it, okay? Yeah. This whole example shows just how hard it is to build a great American company, to build something that employs thousands of people, and how easy it is for the left and government weaponization. Shannon, was that your phone? I'll call you back, Mom. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to me, um, it's so easy to tear everything down, and that's exactly what's happening. All these people in the media are laughing, they're loving this, they've never built anything in their life. And when it comes to people watching this, one of the scariest things for the average American is to get a phone call from a lawyer or from a government official saying, we're taking you to court, you've been sued, because it costs a lot of money and your livelihood gets completely wiped out. They're watching this play out on a huge level. And for Letitia James to be confiscating buildings now, these aren't just buildings. These are places that employ and people live in hundreds them. of people, thousands of people. People live in people these buildings. Work in them. <laughs> and you say maybe they haven't thought about the consequences. I think they have, and they don't care because they are willing to sacrifice people for the sake of their agenda. And their agenda is to stop Trump from running for office. And they are sure making it look like they're scared to run against him. Well, now along, they said he was the guy that wanted to run against but in the first place. It, I, it just made me think of this. What if you live in a... Who's your landlord then? Right. And, and how your, the government is now your landlord. Yeah. Think about that. But you notice it sounds like what they're looking at are the properties outside of yeah. New York, like Westchester, the golf club, the private estate. Or even they're talking Mar-a-Lago. Right, because yeah. I think that even for Tish James to look at the Trump Tower and the optics of what it would do to take his name off, to kick people out, to kick businesses out, I think they know in the city that would create a ripple yeah. of fear. So just take his homes. Right. Yeah. Right. I think that's where they're going. <laughs> where people Amazing. work. Yeah. Who's going to sign their paycheck? Uh, this is unbelievable, this is... Jessica. Unbelievable. You should be ashamed. You of really should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> I'm feeling fine. This on is this what Friday. they do at Soviet Russia. Five hundred million dollars. Got a lot of cash. Soviet, yeah, just seize his cash so he can't finance Seize it. He's campaign. volunteering it. No, oh, this is ugly. Yeah, and it's you're all about, it's all about for the campaign. It. We're never going to let you forget about it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.